Welcome to Stock Investment Analysis. My channel primarily focuses on stock market investing, but for today's video, I'm going to talk to you about investing in fine art. I will talk a bit about the pros and cons of investing in art and review a fine art investing platform known as Masterworks, which allows investors to buy fractional shares in art that they otherwise would never be able to afford. My goal is for this video to teach you about art as an investment and allow you to make more informed investing decisions when trying to diversify your investments outside of stocks and bonds. Hit the like button to support the channel and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a future video. Your first question might be, is art even really an investment? While art might just be something nice to look at for some, for the ultra wealthy, art is often a very lucrative investment and a way to diversify their portfolio beyond the typical stocks, bonds, and real estate we often hear about. Celebrities like those shown here have invested heavily in art. Beyonce and Jay-Z have a well-known art collection which is quite impressive and is worth looking up online when you have the chance. So if many celebrities and the ultra wealthy are doing this, why? Is it just for the status? There are two main reasons. The first is diversification. This chart here shows the correlations between different types of investments or asset classes. Many types of investments tend to go up and down together. That means that they may not be providing the diversification and protection against risk you thought they were. A correlation is a measure of the relationship between two things. If the correlation is a 1, which is the highest number possible, it means that there is a perfect match between the two things. When one goes up, the other goes up. A negative 1 means a polar opposite relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down. A 0 means that there is absolutely no relationship. Now let's look at hedge funds. They have correlations generally ranging from the 0.4s to the 0.7s across the board. In other words, these other types of investments generally go up and down together with the hedge funds. Real estate has less of a correlation with other asset classes, but still has many correlations in the 0.5s, 0.6s, and 0.7s. Now look at art. Most correlations are on 0.1 or even less. The highest correlation is a negative 0.37 with high yield fixed income. If you want more diversification, art provides this in a truer form than these other more commonly discussed asset classes. Over time, art has been appreciating fairly quickly. If you look at this history across four decades, you can see the dotted line which follows art sales in the form of Sotheby's May Moses All Art Index. At the high end, a piece by Leonardo da Vinci sold for over $450 million. The US is the biggest art market, currently with Britain and China coming in as second and third. However, it is expected that China will continue to grow even faster than other regions of the world. Down at the bottom, we see an increase in Asia from $370 billion to $445 billion over five years. Lesser increases are expected across the board and just North America's art market will be near three quarters of a trillion dollars by 2023. As demand and disposable income increase, art values will do the same. How do the returns in fine art compare to the returns of the stock market? Well, that'll of course depend on which art you've invested in, just like it will depend on which companies on the stock market. This chart shows the S&P 500 returns since 2000 in dark blue at the very bottom. The blue line is the Artnet index for top 10 artists, and the green, which is even higher, is the Artnet index for top 100 artists. Both had significantly higher returns than the S&P 500. If you are curious what this index is, it includes 100 top ranked artists, 49 of which you can see right here. The percentage is the weight of the index attributed to that particular artist. Notable artists you can see here in this index include Picasso, Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Matisse, Warhol, Dali, and so on. If we focus only on contemporary art, we see similar outperformance by art. The S&P 500 slightly outperforms European contemporary art in dark green, but is well below global contemporary art in lighter green and American contemporary art in the lighter blue. Fine art is not just American and European, however. For example, as China's economy and spending power has grown, so is the value of its fine art. Look at the explosion in art prices for Chinese art. Again, the S&P 500 is in the blue and far, far below the art valuations. Chinese 20th century and contemporary art is higher, and fine Chinese paintings and calligraphy is even higher than that. Not only is the Chinese art above the S&P 500 by a wide margin, but the returns are even above the American and European art value appreciation. Now just to be clear, I'm not telling you to buy art as an investment. I am neither a financial advisor nor an art expert. However, I do want to emphasize here that investing intelligently in art could provide outperformance over time and will bring diversification to your portfolio. The biggest obstacle for most investors like you or I buying fine art like this is the cost. These paintings or works of art are typically millions, tens of millions, or even hundreds of millions of dollars. This is why Masterworks is an interesting option. With Masterworks, you are able to buy fractional shares of these works of art on their investing platform. You therefore do not need a large amount of capital. 
If you choose, you could buy $500 worth of a Monet and then $500 worth of a Warhol and consider yourself an investor in fine art. At your next party, you can offhandedly mention you are searching to buy your second Monet. Everyone who loves pretentiousness will love you. So how does it work? First, Masterworks sources the paintings and commits its capital to purchase them. They then clear the offering with the SEC so they can publicly offer it. Next, we as investors can purchase shares of the paintings from Masterworks, which then frees up their capital. Next, at some point in the future, Masterworks sells that painting and each investor is paid in shares proportionate to however much the painting gained or lost in value. The great thing about this is they have experts in art who can do the research for us. I know nothing about fine art, so relying on their expertise is great. They rely on information such as the global collector base of an artist, the artist appreciation rate, demand for the artist, and the risk or volatility of the artist market. The next great thing is I can invest for only a few hundred dollars. And by the way, the website might say that you need a thousand dollars to start, but I spoke with them and was able to begin investing for only five hundred dollars. So the minimums they list are subject to change if you ask. Now the downside is you are of course sharing your Banksy or Da Vinci with other investors and you don't get to choose when to sell. Perhaps you wish you could keep your painting forever, but you won't have this option. It is sold whenever they believe it is the right time. A concern some investors may have is the illiquidity of this investment. In other words, what if I want to sell my investment in a Banksy painting in two years, but Masterworks chooses not to sell it for 10 years? Is my money trapped? Fortunately, they have added a secondary market which is currently in beta. As you can see here, you can use their marketplace to buy and sell shares of paintings which have already been offered. This allows you to sell early if you choose to. It also means that if you decide to invest and realize their initial offering of a Monet painting for example has already sold out, you can still buy it on the secondary market and get a piece of it from other investors. So what does it look like when you want to invest in art? Here's what it looks like when I look at buying shares in this piece by Monet. Now full disclosure, I own around $1,000 of this painting already. Partly, it is to diversify my portfolio and partly it's to brag about owning a Monet to try to convince others I'm a millionaire. But mostly, it's because it is honestly really cool to own part of a painting by such a celebrated artist. Now when I look at this painting, I see it is 92% funded. In other words, of their almost $6.9 million offering, only 8% remains unfunded. Once the remainder is funded, investors can only invest in this painting by buying shares from other investors on the secondary market. Currently, the shares cost $20. Although they bought the painting for almost $6.9 million, its appraisal is actually $8.5 million. If it was to sell for that much right now, I would have already made a profit. As you can see here, the gross return of similar works has been around 9.27% per year. Masterworks provides a lot of information on artists and their paintings. For example, here we learn Monet was among the top 10 best-selling artists since 2013. Almost $300 million of his paintings sold last year, and one painting sold for $110 million last year. The current auction house estimate for the painting is between $6.7 and almost $9.4 million. This chart shows price appreciation across Monet's paintings as the average sales price has increased considerably between 1994 and 2018. So looking here, we see the historical returns for other art by the same artist Monet. If we take a look at this first painting here, we see the purchase price originally was $143,000, but when it was sold, it sold for $5.7 million, which was an amazing 40 times gross return over a 39 year holding period. The next painting here we have is a 10 times, almost 11 times gross return over 30 years. And you can just scroll through these paintings, take a look at all the different paintings they have, see what the returns were like. And we have nine and a half, 10 times returnings here. You can see more results and just keep going through it, see what you find and get a general sense of what the paintings are selling for and what amount of appreciation appears to be taking place over various durations of time. Looking here at the bottom, we see their media section, which is demonstrating close-ups of the painting. So we see some of the, of the close-ups of the front. We can look at some of the brush strokes here. We can see the back. And then even beyond that, they have different documents you can review, and you can also look at information for the provenance. All right, and then they have this price database, which allows you to do a lot of research on artists, and they call it outsmarting the art market. They have 60,000 plus data points, 70 plus years of data, and proprietary data set, which they allow you to take a look through. And uh, we're gonna try one right now. We're gonna look at Andy Warhol. He is a well-known artist and his art has been doing very, very well in terms of appreciation. So they have 376 pieces of art that we can look at. So looking at this first one here, <laughs> in only 28 years, somehow this piece of art has appreciated almost 91 times. So it went from a $46,000 painting to over $4 million. And I truly wish that I would have spent that much money on this piece of art because that is absolutely worth it. Uh, over here we have 83 times appreciation in 30 years. 
70 times here in 15 years for what appears to be a box <laughs> of something, uh, 63 times in 19 years, and you just you know go through this 49 times, 51 times in fairly you know relatively short periods of time, 49 times in 18 years, and you just get a sense of you know some of the art and the evaluation of of these pieces of art. It's very very interesting to go through this, and just do a little bit of research. One final thing I need to highlight are the fees. The fees are similar to those of a hedge fund. Masterworks takes 1.5% per year to fund their operations and 20% of all sales. That is quite a bit higher than I would like to see, although I do appreciate they are doing all the work for us in terms of researching the art, securing the art, ensuring the art, storing, housing, and protecting the art, and eventually selling or auctioning the art. In conclusion, I think it's a very cool idea and I love the idea of being able to buy art by these artists, even if it's only a tiny fraction like the 0.015% of a Monet I now own. I also like the idea of diversifying outside of stocks, bonds, and real estate. That being said, I see this as only a very small portion of my overall investment portfolio. My primary focus remains on dividend growth stocks given the passive income they provide and my ability to better understand and value them. What are your thoughts on investing in fine art? Would you do it? Have you done it already? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please take a moment to subscribe as I am creating new videos for you every week. As always, good luck with your investing.